Welcome back. We need to continue our discussion on leveling and we need to dive in with a discussion on control networks. Benchmarks are usually cataloged uh, by some organization that owns them. For instance, a large number of benchmarks, that is our vertical control points, are cataloged by our National Geodetic Survey. The National Geodetic Survey is a is a division of the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration who is also host to the National Weather Service. They catalog benchmarks at a site that you see here and we'll take a look at that in just a moment and, and some of the results. However, not all benchmarks are cataloged through this national database. There are many benchmarks. In fact, the vast majority of the benchmarks that you uh, will likely use or be affected by on your projects will be created by perhaps the company you work for, engineering or surveying companies, or local municipalities, or even county and state departments of transportation, as well as other uh, private and government agencies. Here I want to show you a map of uh, a large chunk of Champaign County and this map shows with three different symbols uh, a network of benchmarks, vertical control points spanning across the county. What you see uh, the red array of points are what we would call first order benchmarks. They were run as a as a couple of campaigns that of surveying that generally followed railroad lines. There were some exceptions to that. We also have a second order circuit that ran north and south again along railroad lines and then a few third order points were established relative to the first and second order circuits. These some of these points are primarily uh, vertical control, some are vertical control and horizontal. As we zoom in a little bit here you can see part of Champaign. At the top of the screen there are three interstate interchanges. The one on the upper right is Lincoln Avenue the one and the one at the upper left is Prospect Avenue. And at the very bottom center of the photograph here you can see the assembly hall. Notice we have benchmarks scattered along here and clearly you can see the ones uh, that follow the railroad running from the east center side to the the north uh, western side of the photograph. Well if we keep zooming in I want to show you here the Parkland College campus on the left and Dodds Park, uh, City Park uh, in on the, on the right hand side of the photo. Uh, near the north side of the park is a water treatment plant. This is operated by Illinois American Water Company and the red triangle that's on the north side of that is a schematic position of a benchmark that has a identifying number of LC0143. Well that that number corresponds with a, a benchmark listed in the National Geodetic Survey database. The true point is on the abutment of a bridge, a stone and concrete bridge supporting the rail railroad over a waterway and it's at the pointed end of the yellow arrow that you see here. We can look up this particular data sheet in the NGS uh, database and the permanent identifier number or the PID you can see is LC0143. That shows up here in the left column so all of the lines with that permanent identifier on the left column pertain to this particular uh, monument. 
it has an official name V171 and I believe we'll see here in a little while that that is actually a number that is stamped on the bronze tablet set in the concrete abutment of the bridge. The elevation of this benchmark is given in meters and feet and the in meters it's 229.226 and then in feet it's 752.05. Those two elevations are given in a datum uh, called the North American Vertical Datum of 1988. As you can see it on the left there, NAVD88 stands for the North American Vertical Datum of 1988. We'll explain more about datums in uh, another lecture that you need to watch after this one. We show that this benchmark was measured with methods that qualify for first order class 2 accuracy. In fact, that leveling was done with differential leveling, the very similar to what you've done in class in, uh, in 1991 and the, and the results were adjusted as part of a network in June of 1991. Prior to the North American vertical datum of 1988 coming into use during the early 1990s, well, that benchmark had an elevation in what we called the National Geodetic Vertical Datum of 1929. Or, as you can see on the left here, we shortened that with the, with the initials NGVD29. That's the National Geodetic Vertical Datum of 1929. And again, we will see how NGVD29 and NAVD88 relate to each other in a subsequent lecture. If we're trying to find this, we have a description that shows what kind of marker it is. This says it's a benchmark disk set in a retaining wall or a concrete ledge, specifically set in a head wall, and it is stamped V171 1954. That is it was established in 1954 and stamped with a number V171. As a part of an NGS data sheet, data set, you can typically find a station description, or we will call this often the to reach description, the description you would use in order to reach that mark. The original description here says described by Coast and Geodetic Survey, 1954. Well, that's when it was set. And the Coast and Geodetic Survey is the predecessor to our National Geodetic Survey. It used to be called the United States Coast and Geodetic Survey, or we would often give it the initials for that, USCNGS. So USCNGS is the predecessor to our current day NGS, that is the National Geodetic Survey. I'm not going to go through the details of this particular description, but I do want you to notice that it has been supplemented because over time our geography changes a little bit. In 1986 there was new information added to the to reach description because consider that in 1986, uh, Mattis Avenue had changed quite a bit from what it had been in 1954. In 1954, Champaign didn't reach out that far. Well, in the intervening 32 years from the time the original description was written to 1986, things have changed quite a bit. Let me show you a little bit about how to access some of this information on the NGS website. You can see the address, the URL right up here, www.ngs.noaa.gov. And we get to these data sheets, the survey mark data sheets, through the link you see here. 
Let's go in with data sheets. That's the kind of thing we're looking for. There are several other types of data that you can see, but we're going to go in and search in our data sheet database. Well, we have multiple ways that we can search. If you know the permanent identifier, as we did with our V171 point, LC0143, we could type it in there. If we are looking for what we call a continuously operating reference station, or cores, we can plug that in. We can also search radially. If we know a, a latitude and longitude, approximate latitude and longitude, and then say I want to search within a mile of that or multiple miles, we can do that way. Or rectangular search, maximum minimum coordinates. We can give it station name. We could search directly uh, by station name V171. I'm going to use county as, as the basis for my search. So, when I go into county, first I have to select the state. And when I scroll down, I can select Illinois, get the county list, and then scroll down and select Champaign. Now, there are all kinds of different marks we can retrieve. You can see by the data type desired, we can select any horizontal and vertical control. We can look at those sites whose positions are measured with GPS only. We can look at horizontal control positions. We can look at vertical control. There are a few other types of categories, but we're going to go with any vertical control. And when I have selected this, I can say Get Marks. and the results you can see listed here. In the column on the left you can see point or permanent identifier here, uh, very similar to the format you saw before. It tells us uh, what datum we're in. We have an approximate latitude and longitude for each point, a stability, that's what STAB stands for, and you'll see that in a moment, and then the designation. We can sort by any of these things but right now I'm going to scroll down and you'll see that these designations or these names are alpha, in alphabetical order and I can select V171. So I select Get Data Sheets and this is the very same one that we saw just a moment ago. There's the V171, there's the permanent identifier and all the information we saw before. One of the things I mentioned just a little bit ago was stability. And down here in the information uh, about the physical mark itself, it says this is a stability C. It may hold, but of a type commonly subject to surface motion. Generally, this isn't, uh, uh, isn't going to be a real problem, especially for uh, for um, this type of benchmark, but they're simply saying, well, it, it could move someday. But generally, we find these pretty stable. So, pretty easy little trick to recover these things. I can go back and, and then uh, get others. I can select multiple ones and say get data sheets. And when it does, it simply strings them together. There's the first data sheet and then the second one begins right here. Notice that the permanent identifier in the, in the left side of the sheet changes and we simply string together multiple benchmark descriptions in a text file. I would encourage you to get into this portion of the NGS website and play around with it. You may find some very useful information in there that may reveal some of the control marks in your area. You may find that it's pretty easy to recover the type of information you need.